Hey friends, welcome to our homestead. Today we are gonna make for you a portable solar generator. You've probably seen these before and it's made with this beautiful thing in this box right here. Let me show you what's in here and I'll show you how to make it. Let's go. All right, if you haven't seen this before, this is the EG4 3000 EHV inverter. It's been around for a while and it is a little workhorse. These things just keep going and going and going. And the cool thing is, is this is packaged with pretty much everything you need for a small system to get it up and running just like that. You don't have to buy many extra things for this. This kit comes with battery cables that have crimped ferrules on the ends so they are much easier to put into the terminals on the inverter. It comes with a 100 amp Nader breaker. It comes with DIN rail to mount the breaker. And of course it comes with all of the communications cords and paralleling cords that you might need. The beautiful thing about this unit is it's small, powerful, and light. This thing is only 18 pounds. You can get one of these for only $674. This is a three kilowatt inverter or 3000 watts of output. And you can put in 5,000 watts of solar panels. That blows away any of the other portable units, say like an EcoFlow Delta, which only allows about 1,600 watts of solar panels. You can build a small system yourself for less than it costs to buy one of those all-in-one units. And while the output on an EcoFlow Delta Pro is just a little bit more at 3,600, the amount of solar that you can put into this makes up for it, simply because you're gonna be charging your battery way faster if it's under load. If you wanna expand on this in the future and take it out of your portable system and put it in your home, then you can expand these and parallel up to 12 of them. So we purchased this hand truck or hand cart and we are going to attach all of this to this hand cart. And you'll need this because of the weight of the battery. And let me show you what that is. And that's this EG4 Life Power 4 version two battery. These batteries right now are only 1200 bucks. So comparatively, this is one of the least expensive, highest quality batteries on the market right now. And we're gonna use it as part of this system. The simplest way to attach this to your hand cart or hand truck is to use a ratchet strap. Everybody uses this method and it does work the best. Just arrange the strap in the best position that you possibly can. Now, of course, we want to attach our inverter to our hand cart. Now we can come up here to the top and align our holes with the pipe on the hand cart, or we can put it down here and devise some sort of cross piece to come across and hold it. Make sure though, that when you purchase your hand cart, that it is tall enough to leave space between the bottom of the inverter and the top of the battery for all the connections. Like I said, the first thing we're gonna do is attach this, and I think I'm gonna attach it all the way up at the top. This 3000 EHV is perfect in that it is the same exact width as my hand truck. So we're gonna align it on each edge. Drilling on a curved surface is a pain, so a punch is very helpful. Gives you the ability to make a dent where your drill bit will sit. You can use any combination of bolt and nut that you want. We've got some lock washers and some regular washers and a wing nut on this so we can take it on and off really easily. There we go friends, it's that simple to put our main parts on our hand truck. Now we are going to tackle the wiring, which is just as simple. This build should take you no more than about 25 to 30 minutes. Before I wire it, let me show you all the extra parts and pieces that you will need. First is a heavy duty extension cord. Now this is going to be for our AC in, if we want to charge our battery from the wall, if we don't have any sun to use our solar panels. What you're gonna do is take off the female end and strip down the cord and get to the three internal wires, your ground, your neutral, and your hot. And then our male end is what's going to plug into the wall to charge the battery if we don't have any sun. Now the next thing, you can do one of two different things. It's all up to you. You can take one, a power bar like this, we're gonna cut off the male end, and we are gonna wire that in to the AC out on our unit. Or you can purchase a small load center like this and wire this into the AC out. This gives you a little bit more options for some larger loads. And that's for using things that are heavy duty, 
like this big drill with this huge auger on it. From your small load center like this, use a receptacle and wire it into this. Today I'm just going to do this one because it's a little bit easier for you to do. I'm just going to attach it to the side of our inverter with some Velcro. You can also mount it on top of the inverter, which is also perfectly fine. But we also need to save room for this. Now this is a little bit extra step I don't see others doing. This is a PV disconnect. This disconnects the solar panels from our unit if you need to work on it. Now of course when you're working on any electronic or electrical equipment like this, you need to shut down your equipment first. So turn off the power on your inverter and on your battery and also turn off its breaker. But I always like to have one of these just in case. And then of course we've got our solar PV wire. So remember, everything that I'm using today is listed in the description below the video. Go check those out. And if you're interested in getting one of these, I also have a $50 off coupon listed in that description just for you. The last thing I have here are two pigtails that I've made for the solar wires. And if you decide to not put the disconnect switch in this system, this makes it really easy to detach your solar panels. The two bare ends will go into the terminals on the bottom of the inverter, and I'll show you that in a second, and then these will just hang out the bottom. Then when you're ready to connect your solar panel, this makes it an easy plug and play. Okay, let's get into the bottom of the inverter here, and it's just these two tiny little screws on either side to open up this bottom portion. For our power strip, I elected to put ferrules on the ends of the wires because they are fine stranded wires. And this makes it a lot easier to get them in the terminals. And like I mentioned before, the battery cables come pre-ferruled, which is really nice. On the bottom of the inverter here, it does say which side is the positive and negative terminal. The negative is on the right side, the positive is on the left. You're gonna have to sneak your screwdriver in this way to get to the terminals, to loosen them up, and then get your wire through the bottom. That ferrule makes it a thousand times easier to get that in there. Remember, when you're putting this together, you're gonna need several different types of screwdrivers because all the terminals are just a little bit different. The battery terminals are the square drive electrical screwdriver. You can see the taller your hand cart, the better it is because I've got a lot of room to play with here between the battery and the bottom of the inverter. Okay, let's get our PV wires in here. Negative is on the right, positive is on the left. And also as a reminder, I always have all of my tools listed in the description below the video as well. So if that's helpful for you, head down below and check those out. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got our battery cables in to these ports. We've got our PV in and all of our AC in and AC out connected right here. If you wanna connect your AC out ground to this screw here, you can also do that. And then if you do want to add communications, it's this cable right here with the yellow ends. You connect it to this RS-485 port, to the RS-485 port on the battery, and then your ID will be the first one down. We've got our power strip mounted on the side. Make sure you don't cover your air intake. And then if you want to use the PV disconnect, this is a perfect space to put it right on the top. All of these cords store away nice with this big tall hand truck. We've got this one just connected to the back of the top bar right here. So here's one of the big things about this unit that a lot of people love, and that is the amount of solar that you can put into it. Let's talk about that for a second. This is an eco-worthy panel. It is approximately 200 watts. And as an example of how many panels I can put into here, I can go up to 500 volts DC input. Now, if you live in a colder climate, you wanna back that down a little bit but this is just an example to give you an idea. This 200 watt panel by EgoWorthy is about 25 volts. So if you do the math, I could put 20 of these panels in series and still be good on this inverter. It's up to you how you want to configure your panels for your system where you are. And you're gonna have to do the calculations because everybody's going to be a little bit different. These are nice because they are a much smaller panel that's easier to move around if you need to charge your portable system. We turned on our battery first, we turned on our power switch, and then we turned the power switch on on our inverter. We don't have any solar in right now, so it is just using battery power. We're gonna go through some of the main settings in a moment, but right now you can see that we've got 120 volts and we've got it coming from our battery. And let's look on our power strip to see if we have power. And you can see our light is on right here. Not sure you can hear the fan noise on the inverter itself, but it's fairly quiet. Now we are going to do the ubiquitous heat gun test 
and see what happens. This heat gun is rated for 1200 watts. Let's turn it on. Perfect, it's running our heat gun with no problem whatsoever. Now make sure you don't plug in too many things on that power strip that it's not rated for. So if you wanna get a more heavy duty power strip or you wanna use something more heavy duty like this to run your loads, then do so. All right, a couple of quick settings on the inverter. We're gonna hold down the enter button and that's gonna get us into the settings. We can scroll up and down right here and I'm gonna go straight down right away to setting 18 because that one is the buzzer and I cannot stand the sounds on these inverters. So once you get to 18, click into it and you wanna set this for ND1, which is muting all the sounds that it emits. Exit out of that and then come back into this setting right here, which is setting number one. And we're gonna set that for SBU, which means it's gonna use solar first, then battery, and then utility. Then we're gonna go down to setting five. And if you've got the EG4 battery, we're gonna set it at the LI4 battery setting. We're gonna go down to number eight and leave it on the default, which is 120 volts. That's our output voltage. Setting nine, we need to set this to 60 hertz. Europe and Asia use 50 hertz, and I believe Africa does as well. And I think we're the only ones who use 60. So you need to reset this at 60 hertz. All right, we're back down to our maximum charging current from the utility. Now you can see our cord that we have is really rated for only a 20 amp circuit. So we're gonna need to back this down. We're gonna enter in here. We're gonna need to back this off to 20 amps. If you set it to 30, you are going to need to find a plug in your house that's 30 amp, and you're gonna need to have the cord that's attached to this rated at 30 amps. Usually things like your clothes dryer or your water heater are using 30 amp circuits, and that requires a 10 gauge wire. And we're gonna come down to setting 16. Oh, sorry about that. There we go, setting 16. And we're gonna set this for using solar first, and that is called CSO. In this setting, the battery will charge. If solar is not available, it will go back to the utility. Then we're gonna go down to setting 28. And this is where you set the parallel settings. So for this, we just have a single inverter. So set it to SIG. The last setting, we're gonna go down to setting number 45. And we're gonna set it for the battery to cut off at 20% state of charge. And this is debatable but this is usually where the companies like EG4 like their batteries to be set to cut off to conserve the warranty. But lithium batteries, you can really drain down to 0%. Those are all the basic settings that you need. If you have any questions about this build or the EG4 3000 EHV, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this series of videos right here, which is our series on how we built our Victron system to power our barn. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.